Ladies and gentlemen, the smiling face you see in front of you is coming now to us. Now smiling. Is, co <laughs> is coming to us from the smoky environs of Lake Oswego, Oregon. Boy, you have had some problems there, haven't you? Tell me, tell me. I can. I don't know how long we can go today because I'm having trouble breathing. We we'll go as long as you can. I can. I. We don't have to do all 25 minutes. We can do 15 because that's what I normally do with everybody else. But you. But because you're special, I give you 25. <laughs> um, this is interesting for 25. Yeah. To begin with, you have COPD, which is <laughs> greatly affected by this. In fact. Are you uh, not on the oxygen right now because we're talking, or uh, is it okay? Um, I was using it earlier. There's, I also have a nebulizer I use that opens up my bronchial tubes, and I do that four times a day, which I've done. As soon as we're done here, I'll do it for a second time. And, um, you know, as I, if I sit, I'm fine. I can't. Even without smoke, I can't walk very fast mm -hmm. uh, without losing my breath and that sort of right. thing. But it's, um, and I haven't been outdoors since, I don't know, Saturday maybe. I have a wonderful neighbor named Judy mm -hmm. who let me know she was going out for a quick few minutes. Did I need any yesterday and did I need anything at the store? And I was out of milk and couple of other little things so she brought those to me but um it's uh you know it's there there's no name for the color of the sky out here yeah you know, i mean it looks all pretty in the places where it's orange mm -hmm. as terrible as it is mm -hmm. it's not orange here it's somewhere between brown green dingy uh, you know and <laughs> And and the air quality, the little meter I look at online, is uh, marginally better today by the, just a few points from as bad as it can get to a little bit less than that. It, 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 it's gone from Armageddon to uh, something else. Yeah, and everybody keeps telling me around here, oh, it's going to rain tomorrow, it's going to rain tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. For, you know, the official weather forecast is that it doesn't rain until Thursday. And I doubt that. It's not really the rainy season here yet. It's another two or three weeks yeah, away. Oh, boy. Well, that's amazing. I, uh, uh, you know, uh, thank you so much for that smoke, because actually we got it here in New York City I yesterday. know. I saw. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it, you could see that we had some smoke, you know. Well, you know, last week for several days, uh, we had a level one uh, warning three levels for evacuate and and level one is take your time get packed but be ready to go yeah that's what lake oswego was for mm -hmm. several days and that's you can see over there the bags still sitting over there behind me yeah when but packed um uh, we're they took that away we're at zero but um you know, when it's all over i'll unpack the bag <laughs> yeah did, how close did the fires get to you I don't know miles. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. 15, 12, something like that. Wow. Wow. You know, um, well, there isn't a real problem because our president says there isn't a problem. You know. Well, the problem he thinks is that we don't sweep the forest off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What yeah. are you going to do? Uh, yeah. And, and also, when the cool weather comes, this will all go away. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter that we'll all go away. It's already happened, you yeah. know. Well, apparently, he doesn't think. You know, I, I think the worst thing in just the last couple of days from him is that he doesn't think he's president of all the states, only the Republican ones. And it, I mean, it. You know, there's no point in discussing him anymore. Anything that comes out of his mouth is stupid or crazy. Crazy in the literal, you know, medical sense of the word. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there's just no point anymore. He, he is delusional. There's no question about it. Yeah, well, then there's 40% of the United States that seems to think that that's what a president should be. Mm -hmm. How do you think the election is going to turn out? Say again? How do you think the election is going to turn out? 
I do not make predictions and I do not listen to them. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I'm worried about, and this is a definite consideration. The night of the election, he could very well be ahead because Republicans will go to the polls. Democrats, they say by and large, are going to vote by mail. So you got to wait for those to come in. He's probably going to declare himself the winner on the night of the election and then try and negate everything that comes after it. I mean, we could, we could have a constitution. Prediction? We, no, we could have a constitution. Everybody had a prediction. Yeah. Well, we could have a constitutional crisis going on. Well, that, that's not new information. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what to... I mean, I don't understand the point. It's the day will come, and we will see what happens. Mm -hmm. And last year, you know, everybody said everybody's prediction was, uh, you know, Hillary, 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 and look what we got. So, well, we can't afford another four years of this kind of behavior. I'm sorry, you know. It's gonna well, you know, everybody's saying that too. So, you know what the problem is? I think, uh, and 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 this became very, I became very aware of this because I was watching a documentary on the history of. China since Mao. And there was a point in the 50s where we had the opportunity of being very close and good friends with China because Mao wanted it. But we didn't, wouldn't do that because we have this whole big communist, anti communist we thing. We wouldn't going. do that, did you say? Yeah, we wouldn't do it. Because, what president? Uh, uh, this was um, uh, Eisenhower. Because it was the whole anti-communist era, you know, where everybody was afraid yeah. there was a communist behind every When we were growing up, that was yeah. big. So because they were communists, we didn't want anything to do with them, all right? That is an old philosophy. Communism, bad, don't have anything to do with it. Uh, the fact of the matter was that that was a 50s attitude. That's the same attitude Trump has today. He's living in the 50s. You know, the China today is not the China that was then. You know, when you put it that way, it seems to me that over my lifetime, I've known lots of people like that, that they stopped learning mm -hmm. at a certain young age yep. and assume that the world, through their next 40 or 50 years of life, remains static, that it didn't change. Yeah. Oh, interesting point. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I just, it just suddenly I saw the thing with Nixon when he was with you know, Eisenhower's vice president giving a speech about horrible how horrible communism was. It's odd that years later he became the guy that brought us together. But uh, by going to China and being the first president to visit China, but at that time he was a rabid anti-communist because it's what he ran on. And uh, he said, oh, no way we're ever going to have anything to do with China because they're communists. Uh, they, they weren't the same kind of communists as the Russians. In fact, Mao hated Stalin, just hated him. Uh, but we didn't understand any of that. And we could have had an, a good ongoing relationship with him if we could just accept the fact that uh, 1.3 billion people decided to be communists, you know? Uh, and I don't think the people, the individuals made that decision. Well, Posed upon them. Well, it was it it was and it wasn't. I mean, they considered what they had in China a democracy. They wanted it to be a communist democracy, uh, and there's and that in case people think that's weird, no, it's not weird. Uh, communism is a is a uh, economic form, and um, uh, uh, democracy is a relationship of the government to the people. You know, and the freedoms that you have. And they initially wanted all those freedoms for their people. It, it, went, it went awry as the years went on. And Mao got older and stodgier and crankier. Uh, but in the beginning, it was a very noble kind of concept. You know. So anyway, all I'm saying is that he's dealing in tapes that he recorded back in the 50s, okay? And that to him, China's still the same bad country it was back in the 50s, and it's not. It's purely not. Plus, you know, the, the notion that they gave us a virus, it now looks like this virus may have come here about 15 days after it first appeared in China. So, you know, how's it the China virus? All viruses come from Asia. There isn't a virus we've ever had that doesn't come from Asia. They all start there. So, anyway. 
So you're you're sitting there, you're coughing. There is no global warming, according to him, but you are in the direct path of gl global warming where you're living right now. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't go outside. I haven't been outside in over a week. I have, you know, I went outside yesterday. I, I've kind of decided to not go out as much anymore. I've been going out lately because kind of the coast is clear. Our infection rate is down. Wait, 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 wait. wait. The smoke just arrived. No, where no, you no. Are. I'm not talking about the smoke. I'm reverse. talking about. The, I'm talking about the coronavirus. The coast is kind of... Oh, I, I don't even think about it anymore, except to always put a mask on. Yeah, but remember it. when coronavirus was the problem? <laughs> you know, it's my, it's my sense that we just bring on the four horses. We've got everything else. Yeah. Why not bring the four horses? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, and people are saying that. They're saying that this, this almost is like every disaster movie you ever went to. You know, where the skies go orange and... Uh, 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 the world is coming to an end because uh, all the global warming stuff is coming home to roost. Yeah, we, this is what's happening right now in our lives. Plus, we've got the pandemic. Plus, down in Florida, they've got the hurricanes, which mm -hmm. I hope I hope they wipe out. It wipes out Florida, but that's just my personal feeling about Florida. Uh, I have friends there. Leave it alone. Oh, okay, I'll leave it alone. I, I, I lived there for a short time, and I just came to absolutely hate Florida. <laughs> just hate it. Anyway, so how are you doing? I mean, overall, because you know you've got you've got an external problem here with the smoke. Well, it's it's really making a big difference. Really, and little I can physically do. I mean, is we we all know that you know the trajectory of my of my physical being is is downward. But in just the last week, it's gotten worse. This week, finally, after everybody's been giving me a hard time about not doing it, um, I had a cleaning service come in yesterday, and they'll come in every two weeks. It, it, you know, I didn't know quite how grubby I was living. <laughs> <laughs> and it, a wonderful woman came and spent four hours and took care of everything. And it's, I mean, there are things I just didn't think of. For the past two or three or four weeks, every time I've op opened the microwave, I thought, oh, my God, I really do have to clean this. And never quite got, you know, the breath and the energy. And then after she had gone, I went to heat up something, and whoa, it was clean. <laughs> it was nice. It, it, the microwave is one of those things that really gets filthy. Well, and I had, the reason is, is that unless you're putting something in or taking something out, you don't ever look at it. Right. The inside, anyway. And I do. I keep the outside wiped down all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it was, and then I, I pulled it open, and oh, wow, is that clean? Um, so that was my big, big thing this week. At, and she'll be back. But all the, you know, the beginning hard cleaning yeah. uh, was done yeah. yesterday. And, uh, you know, it's, and she'll change the bed. I can't. I used to say it took me to change the bed. I had to sit down and rest for several minutes, three times. I can barely get that done. So she did that, and I didn't have to know anything about it. And she did a really great job. And um, and she was just terrific overall. So, you know, that was the big news this Well, week. I'll tell you something. I want to tell the audience, because there's some people who don't know that I'm talking to my ex-wife, Ronnie Bennett, and that she has... Uh, she had uh, or has do you have still have the, they still consider you have pancreatic cancer or did you what have what they do is whatever other cancers you get or that it metastasized to it's always by the medical community referred to by the first one you got so I have pancreatic cancer there's also cancer in a lung and a cancer in my peritoneum and it's been several months since I've had a scan so who knows where else it is now too yeah yeah but uh um uh you have uh, i don't know when did you first get diagnosed with the pancreatic june 2017. yeah so you've been going for quite a while with this thing and more than three years yeah uh, i i think perhaps you outlive the statistics on this no 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 well not that i don't know if i have or not but i guess i have that, that a very low percentage of people make it beyond one year after diagnosis. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, But I had the Whipple surgery, this gigantic surgery where they cut you all the way down the front down the front and take out all kinds of parts of you. Um, and, but then I have COPD, which is, you know, that's harder to live with than cancer. Mm -hmm. The most remarkable thing has done with the hospice nurse I have in terms of pain. Yeah. Before she came along a month or six weeks ago, I had been taking pain pills when I'd feel a first twinge of pain, usually in my torso somewhere. Right. And as soon as I felt a twinge, I would take a pain pill and it takes an hour to two hours for them to kick in. She said, no, you're not gonna do that anymore. You're going to take a pain pill every six hours on the clock, whether you have pain or not. And if you have pain in between, then take this other pain pill in between. The goal is zero pain. She said, and I couldn't see how how doing it by the clock would help. The body does what it does in its own yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But it works. I, you know, once or twice a week, I have pain breakthrough. That's all, and a pain and a pain pill takes care of it. Well, what it's, probably it, happens. What probably happens is you take the pill. <clears throat> at, let's say every six hours. Let's say arbitrarily. All right. What it does is probably there's a lap over from the time that you took it. I mean, the the, the la, it would last longer if that was all you took. So I don't you, understand what you well, just what said. Well, you're, what you're doing is you're just simply reinforcing the pill you took before it so that you have this constant. But I used to take a pill, and then four hours later, I hurt again. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. It's very interesting. Yes. And how often do you take it? Every six? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I don't wake up in the middle of the night to do it at midnight. Yeah. And it through the night without I don't have any pain when I wake up in the morning really that's interesting because you do go a longer time while you're sleeping yeah I assume you sleep eight hours or something like that <laughs> oh but I, I only wish I'm lucky to get I, three or four. I sleep eight hours every day if I don't get eight hours sleep I'm just a mess I agree I'm working on half that much every day of my life and that shows well my wife has a sleeping problem that way you know and I sleep next to her, so I wake up several times a night when she gets up several times a night. But uh, so basically, where do you feel you stand on all this? What, what, what point are where, you in, what, in, 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 this, in this situation you're in? What, what, in the timeline, where are you? I don't know. You really I, don't know? Nobody has any way to know. Personally, how do you feel about where you are? I'm much, much tired than I used to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that will get any better when the whatever's in the air goes away, the smoke goes yeah, away. Yeah. Um, I I would hope so because it feel I can't be sure, but it feels like it's gotten worse since this since the fires happened. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's um, you know, I'm not going to live through this. <laughs> yeah. But nobody. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, I, if I may sound like Trump, uh, I, and nobody lives through this. We all eventually die, you know. Well, but that's not quite what I meant. But, yeah. um, you mean the smoke and and I and I couldn't. With what you've got wrong with you, what we're saying here, I guess, with what you've got wrong with you, the last thing you needed was this fire thing. Oh yeah, well, yeah. it is what it is. I mean, you can't. You can't go around railing against things you can't control. It just, it's just—it's a waste yeah. of. Time. Yeah. Um, I just wish it would go away, and in between, I'm doing the best I can by not going out, and using oxygen a little more, being very careful about the other stuff, moving slowly. Mm -hmm. When I first get up, is the worst. It's, you know, lying down. I'm perfectly comfortable. Yeah. I can breathe fine. I sit on the edge of the bed. I can breathe fine. I stand up, oh my God, I didn't know that it took so much to breathe standing yeah. up. <laughs> so yeah. I head for the oxygen, you know. <laughs> well, somebody once said, and I thought it was a good joke, so I appropriated it for my own, that, you know, I do a lot of exercise. I do uh, 50 sit-ups every morning. Well, it takes me that many tries to get out of bed. You mm -hmm. know, but I'm a, but uh, I'll tell know. you, when I get up now, it's really strange. I have a hard time in the middle of the night when I get up to go take that midnight, that middle of the night pee that most guys do. 
you guys think it's you guys. All the women, women every oh, woman. My, I, uh, has, Marjorie is up twice a night for that, more than so I am. So, yeah, so don't, it's not guys, it's people. I, I mean, I yelled at her. I said, when, when did you deserve to have a prostate problem? You know, but anyway, I uh, I get up and I can barely walk. I mean, I have to grab on to things and then I write myself up. But I'm so tired that uh, that I have sometimes I have a very hard time. When I finally get up in the morning, I get up pretty easily. But in the middle of the night, it's it's quite a quite a task to get me standing up straight. Uh, it's, it's, it's weird. I guess it's just getting old, damn it. You had to, you had, if, you know, I, I'm going to be like Trump. If you hadn't written that column, that blog, about what it's like to get old, none of us would be getting old. Shame on you. What? Every one of us that comes to. By the way, you can go to her blog, which is timegoesby.net, and, um, Find out what it's like to get old, and now it's it it it, it you you kind of shifted over to what it's also what it's like to deal to die, to die uh, which yes. is is part of getting old. So you've you've yes. literally been covering the subject in depth. I mean, it, it's um, it was just what it's really like to get old, and I've told that story about how I came to that. Mm -hmm. I had to think long and hard about when I was first diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, whether I would write about it or not. And I came to the conclusion of just what you said, mm -hmm. that up until then, I had been, in terms of health, I had been lucky for 76 years. Yeah. The worst thing that ever happened to me was a cold now and then or the flu. Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> and that many people have one or more, I think it's something that after age 65, I could be off, but I'm close. After 65, some huge percentage, like 75 or 80% of people have at least one or two chronic diseases. Right. And if cancer isn't killing you, it's a chronic disease. Some people live with COPD for years and years and years. Mine became evident much later in its development and there's no treatment. You can only, you know, Keep it under control. That's about it. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know anything about that particularly until it happened to me. And then I realized that it kind of fit right in with what I was writing about because up until that happened to me, I was the anomaly. Most people my age had one or two or more diseases. Right. But when you got one. <laughs> I didn't mess around. You hit, you hit it right out of the park, kiddo. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I, I never griped to you about my particular aches and pains because compared to what you're going through, it's just, I'm just, it, 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 I have annoyances, okay? <laughs> you know, I mean, I have neuropathy. That's an annoyance, you know. I have that too. Yeah. Would you like my whole list? Yeah, I have allergy problems. That's an annoyance. Uh, uh, I had the cancer. I had the prostate cancer, but it seems to be remissed, as it were. Uh, and we're, you know, we're, we're, what is that going on? Is that her phone going off? Son of a bitch. Uh, I've got to have her turn that down next time. Anyway. Uh, I don't hear a thing. I know you don't hear a thing. It was all over in the corner. Um, uh, I just, uh, you know, I mean, I, uh, pretty much my cancer, you know, the PSA tests and stuff show that they got it, at least for now, you know, um, so I'm, you know, I mean, I, I consider myself fortunate because even when I got cancer, it was the most, one of the most curable of the cancers. So, you know, uh, so I never gripe about it when I'm on with you because that would be insulting to you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Of course you can. Come on. Come on. You're pathetic. I, I, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Jeez. Uh, it is not fun getting older. Well, we're running out of time. No, I can't. I say that every week, and I shouldn't say that. We're what? running out of our allotted time on the program. You can say we're running out of time. I'm running out of time. You're running out of time, and I'm running out of time, and we're all running Everybody's out of time. Everybody's running out of time. And, and what, let's say we, we get together and do this again in a couple of weeks, okay? Let's do that. Ladies right. and gentlemen, that's, that's Ronnie Bennett. Lively. Timegoesby.net is her blog. Read it. 
go back and read all the old <laughs> stuff because it's ageless. You know, it's 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 uh, what do we call oh, them the thank you. evergreen. Thank you. It's evergreen. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Talk to you soon.